Whoa, misty. Huh. Well, as you can tell, because I'm obviously starting a new project here, me and my brother, I've got a cold. As it has been, as it always will be. So you may have noticed that there's not as much, uh, the van's a bit drippy, of course. You may have noticed that there's uh, <coughs> no dashboard in the van anymore. We thought we may as well give it a damn good clean out. Pressure washer. And how to get rid of all the expanding foam. I've done a bit on the floor, not much, but I've done a bit. Pressure washer works friggin' awesome. Let's see if I can get my camera wet. You watch this. bit loud sorry about that works great works great yeah okay you get the inside of the van wet but at the end of the day these things fill up that much condensation anyway well I must admit this van was drying out pretty good you don't have a nice place to stash all your plastics up there which are actually getting covered in uh, water I might move them clocks when I get them dirty and make them start working that wouldn't be good would it I'll put them in the garage I think We've got screws everywhere, I mean, wow. Even inside the burner, we've got pots and pots full of screws. You wouldn't believe how many screws go into these, uh, into these things. I'm going to put that in there. Keep it safe inside my old Fiat Panda. My old Fiat Panda 4x4. That one's called Talon. And the one I've got on the front, the crazy one, you can just see out there. Yeah, you can just see the aerial sticking up. That one's called Ratchet. Good stuff. You should see my other YouTube videos on those guys. Right, let's uh Alright, let's get the rest of this thing tidied up and cleaned out. Most of the Solitex, not the Solitex, sorry, the XPS is uh stored underneath the van. Not the ideal place to put it, I know, but it doesn't absorb moisture, so it'll be good. And as for me. I'm getting covered in the stuff. Should wear wearing goggles, I suppose, but it's only uh, it's only uh, expanding polystyrene. Well, you know, it's not, what's it called again? Uh, expanding foam. Ah, fun. Right, put my camera somewhere. It's not going to get wet on this toolbox, I think. And uh, yeah, we'll go at it again. When you take the door plastics off, it's nice to see just how badly buckled the door is. No wonder it doesn't shut right. Alright. Okay, it's getting dark, but uh, wow, what a transformation, huh? There's still a bit on the floor, but yeah, I'll give the, uh, when we stick the thinner insulation, because we're not going to put the XPS on the floor because of risking the uh, head height. We're going to put some thinner stuff, maybe like a Salatex maybe or something. I don't know, it's my brother's idea, he knows what he's doing. I'm just the, uh, <laughs> I'm just the manual labour, so to speak. Uh, yeah, look at the difference. It's completely got rid of all the stuff off the roof, pretty much. Like I could say, there's, there's bits, but... It doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, so it could give you something to, uh... Something to thingy to, for the uh, new stuff to stick to. Don't know what glue they used. It's pretty good stuff though. So all this crap here. Now I have pressure washed this stuff quite severely. And I tell you something, it didn't come off. It's like a it's like a, a sticky tar. It's almost like wax oil, but it's it's not. It's uh, I don't know. Probably something that they'll carry in the back of this thing and it defrosted maybe or something like that. I don't know. Whatever, it's not very pleasant stuff. It's uh it is a lot like like fat you'd get in the drain, you know, it's not nice at all. It's all come come across into the front as you can see. I'll tell you what it's just like, it's like uh, fat from like a fryer. You know, it's like fryer fat. 
not nice, not nice at all. Yeah. I'll be picking this up for, for years, I think. Hopefully, my mum do not see the mess this was in. It's one of the reasons why I didn't record it. Right, it's a mess. Everywhere's a mess. I don't know I'll put my red little tub. I've got a tub somewhere that's full of, uh, full of this stuff that I keep. Uh, well, I'll do there for now. Yeah, like I say, uh, I did well, pretty well not getting anything too wet in the front. Uh, the next plan of attack is to get all these plastics out on the lawn or something. Jet wash all them down, clean them all up. It's only plastic at the end of the day. Uh, that consists of the dashboard. The dashboard in this thing actually consists of three parts. And if you want to take the dashboard out of one of these Avicos, the Mach, the Mach 4 Avico, all I can literally tell you is, if you find a screw, undo the screw. <laughs> Just don't undo the bolts. You'll see there's a... Yeah. You'll see these like these bolt things here. Don't undo those, otherwise you uh, completely remove the whole cross member thing in the dashboard. You know, the thing that your steering column bolted to. To get the carpet out, you kind of do uh, have to unbolt your steering column. Uh, one thing I recommend is to uh, not have your steering lock off uh, on of all things, because obviously your steering lock's at an angle. But instead, get your steering wheel flat, you know, so your wheels are pointing straight forward. Well, I could say just mark the, uh, you know, mark the thing up. But uh, what I w what I did was I uh, it was already marked, fully enough. Someone must have had it off before, maybe. It's down in there somewhere. Oh, you can't see it's behind the pedal. Yeah, it's down there somewhere. Uh, yeah, just. Uh, do your best, uh, mock it up, don't have your steering lock on, uh, but then when you have got your column free from your uh, the bin in the bottom, I can't remember the name of it now, it's all part of the same thing, steering column, when you've separated your steering column, then turn your steering to whichever direction you want and you can remember and lock your steering wheel. Uh, and whatever you do, don't get your kids or you know, some idiot come along. No offence if your kids are uh, thingy, of course. <laughs> Not saying your kids are idiots. But, uh, you know, some other idiot come along and start spinning the steering wheel around. Because inside that there's a thing called a clock spring. If you turn it too much, you will snap that. And it's not so much of a spring, it's more of a... Uh, it's like a wound up tape. Uh, that can, that uh, on a modern day car it would, well modern day, this is pretty modern, albeit 10 years, but on a, a more sophisticated vehicle, shall we say, that's got all the steering wheel control buttons and things, paddle shift on the, uh, and everything else, that would all be done through this ribbon of cable which is wound around and around. And uh, obviously you, got, you think with a steering wheel you've got uh, you can't really put any cables in that, really, because how do you get the cables to go through from the column, which doesn't move, you know, your, your, your stalks and whatnot, which doesn't, which doesn't move, to the actual steering wheel that spins around? Well, you could do it with slip rings and brushes, I suppose, but the amount of times you turn the steering wheel, especially um, if, you, if you know your motorbikes and stuff and you know how, of, of headstock bearings, you get a thing called chatter, and it's because the steering wheels, or the, so I say, the handlebars, stay in the same place at a you know at a lot of times, are you straight on, and you just make small corrections, and that really wears away tracks and brushes. So that idea won't work. It'll work for probably I don't know, a couple of thousand miles, but other than that, it'll just die very quickly, which just haven't got a material that's strong enough to to survive. <clears throat> so that would wear out. So they come up with the idea of getting a, uh, so this is your, your centre point in the middle there of your steering wheel, a tape that, that winds around and around. Now the beautiful thing about uh, modern day vehicles is they run a thing called canvas, which you hear a lot of people hate it, but it's actually a very good thing. And canvas, what it does is it uh, enables you to control multiple things with just two wires. Very, very Cool. Going back to the van. <laughs> yeah, so we had to drill the uh, the bulkhead out there. Some of the pot rivets. Yeah, if anybody needs a bulkhead, 
for a, uh, what do you call it, one of these things. We've got one and it's pretty much brand new. Uh, we've got it for, we're gonna, we're gonna sell it on at some point. So look in the garage, see what we've got. Refrigeration unit there, glove box full of stuff. Lights on. There you go, look. Pretty much a brand new bulkhead. It's been uh, literally hidden behind a, uh, a fiberglass board with loads of insulation behind it. So it's got absolutely no damage whatsoever. It's uh, apart from the glue, but it's not a problem, is it? <coughs> it's got no damage whatsoever. So we'll be selling that on. We don't need it anymore. We're not going to bother with that. Let's have a look and see what kind of power we've generated today. Yeah, solar panel project. Wow, look at that look. 3,578 watt hours. That is pretty good going. It's been pretty sunny all day today. And the sun still isn't at its strongest point. It's still technically, well, it's just coming into spring now. Just. I mean, I'm in a jumper, which is pretty good. I've got a cold as well. That's probably why, maybe. I don't know. That's six solar panels. And a two kilowatt system, uh, two kilowatt panels running at uh, 38 volts. Uh, obviously, that's each panel just on the roof up there. Uh, you can just see the panel. <coughs> very, very cool system. Right, I think that is about it for me today. Uh, we've got the refrigerator, refrigerant in that R134A, which is uh, pumped down from the refrigeration unit right anyway it's getting dark I might just be as the jet washer is still plugged in I just need to tidy this up a little bit might jet wash the flooring it's a bit yucky and gunky but uh, I'll get a bit of a jet wash see what it looks like after I'll do that down here I think on this gravel yeah it should do all right See you in a second. Uh, that stuff seems to be baked on a little more tough than I thought it was going to be. Uh, that was after a bit of a jet wash in there and it's uh, it's not shifted. It, a bit's come off, you know, around the, uh, the bits where feet aren't. But it's still gunky and horrible. You have to use some, uh, some kind of detergent on it, I think. Detergent and a brush. We'll see how that goes. But uh, the dirtiest part is in the bottom of it. I've not actually flipped this up yet, but oh god, look at that. Icky. That's all fat and grease from whatever this fridge run was carrying. Pretty damn disgusting. Like I say, if you ever do decide to get a fridge van to convert into a, uh, you know, a motorhome of some description, or a uh, camper van, don't be you know, expected to, be, to do stuff like this. I mean, it's it's good to do it because obviously, uh, obviously it's uh, it's good to you know look for rust and stuff. I mean, if you look back at my old videos of me when I was doing my Fiat up, you'll see I completely stripped them down to almost nothing. Literally just a rolling shell uh, to look for rust. And I, uh, I did what I could with that. Let's just have a look and see if uh, what will happen if I do this. Uh, it's not going to touch it, look. You'd end up ripping it to bits. I'm afraid it's going to require some kind of... Uh, uh, some kind of... Uh, what do you call it to clean that up? May even look at getting a replacement carpet. Um, just because this has got that much crud and crap soaked into it. This is all foam as well, so that would have all soaked it up. So it may be uh, advisable to actually look for a replacement, uh, you know, floor mat. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. You can see where it looks like it's supposed to be cut off. Look here. Maybe it's. Uh, Maybe it's got a uh, you know, different models it is, like that. Who knows, we'll see. 
right, I think I'm going to call it quits today. It's going dark. My head's starting to pound a little bit. And I think that's uh, that means it's time to go in. <coughs> Bloody colds. I always seem to have colds when I'm doing YouTube uh, videos. Right, it's going dark. I'm rambling. So all the panels will be shut off by about now. Believe it or not, they'll still be making a little bit of voltage. We've got the moon out. I can't really see it very well, but this camera does have a kick ass zoom. Let's just have a bit of a zoom in on that. Okay. That's impressive. <laughs> right. right. Time to go in. Thanks for watching guys and girls and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out.